Hi, welcome to the Knitting Samurai Plus One video podcast. I'm your host, Steph, and this is episode 92. I thought he'd be here by now. <laughs> it is Friday, June 6th. It's a perfectly good day to be born, but he's not listening to me. <laughs> um, and I'm here, it's a lovely day, and I thought we'd do some knitting chat before things happen. <laughs> so, a stash dash is on. For those of you that are participating, I'm sure you're excited to hear about it. And for those of you who aren't, I'm sure you're like, oh my god, here we go again. So, it's easy. Join in if you want. Try to knit uh, 5,400 plus yards between now and August 7th. And that's just purely a motivational knit along. So, sort of knit along. So that's going on right now, and I am currently at 937 yards. So excited to have counted that up and know where I'm at. Um, I did have some adventures in dyeing this week, and we are going to jump back in time. So we're here in my kitchen, and these are my Mystic socks. They're finished, and I'm not crazy about the color. So I have a pot of warm blue dye going and I'm just going to drop these in there and see how it comes out. So um, I thought I'd share them with you pre-dye. So you can see super quick knit. I knit them in under a week using US size zeros, um, 2.0 millimeter needles. Yeah, I didn't really make any alterations. Oh yes I did. I did um, 64 stitches for the foot and then 68 on the leg as the pattern calls for just because I want to make sure that this portion right here where you're going diagonal on the bias that it would fit over my foot over my heel and they do and they're lovely and it's my first OMG heel I've never done that before so there they are before so I started off I made the blue and then I wasn't really sure and so I thought I'd take some bear yarn that I had this is Knit Picks DK Bear and I dip that in sort of as my control to see how much dye would get absorbed how quickly before I like oversaturated the socks and turned them very dark like that so these are the two skeins I initially tested with and um, I used two different shades of blue that I mixed together I actually have quite a bit of dye um, not that I'm going to start dyeing anytime soon but at one point it was an interest of mine something I wanted to learn how to do and so um, I dipped these and they came out the glorious variegated blue about 500 yards here in total and I can see a Roland sweater <laughs> that's what I was thinking when I dyed it so that's how those came out um, the socks themselves look at this look aren't they glorious so these are the mystic socks by Josh Rick's mystic mystic spiral socks and yeah so I, gar I basically garment dyed them is the technical term for it and I just love how they turned out I think they will go great with a pair of jeans I love that the white turned to blue the it made the green and the brown a little more tonal the red didn't go as purple as I expected but that's fine the blue pretty much the same but yeah and I did a lot of stirring while during the uh, 30 minutes that I was dyeing them, hoping and adding a little more blue as I went. <laughs> like, okay, is this gonna be right? Is this gonna be right? You could definitely see that it didn't absorb solidly, so it gave them even more of a heathered look than they previously had. But let me see if I show you the same sides. That's how they came out. So excited. And they fit great. Um, I did modified the pattern so it's 64 stitches on the foot 68 on the leg I'm not sure if I told you this yesterday but um, yeah can't wait to wear them can't wait to wear them Steve loves them too he looked at them and was like whoa those look awesome <laughs> so it was scary but I'm glad I did it so there's that um, what else that is the first time since Roland's been born that I knit a pair of socks in two weeks like super quick knit for these um, I have to say that the pattern wasn't as intuitive as I would have liked it to have been, but um, I don't know. I don't know if it's a learning and the next time around it'll be easier, but yeah, so here they are. Mistake socks. Okay, now I'm done talking about them. I just wanted to say that, that I was really proud of the two-week thing. 
Um, I also have on my needles the Houdini sock by Cat Bordy. So this is, I talked about it previously, and we are going to do a knit along. There's some chatter going on on the boards. I am using the Desert Vista Dye Works uh, Holiday Wreath Colorway, which, as you can see here, is a three-color striped yarn. I just have a toe done. <laughs> but I was so focused on the Mystic Spirals that I wasn't really working on these but now these will get my attention I'm using US zeros two millimeter needles and I think I'm gonna do the foot plain stockinette just to keep it simple for when I do um, do the sticking to put in the afterthought leg is it sticking or do the afterthought leg I don't think it's sticking. I think you use waist yarn um, it is a free pattern over on twist collective I believe they were the ones that published it um, so yeah, you knit the, the footprint, the sole of the foot, and then you cut it and do an afterthought leg. So that's why I was interested in these to begin with. And yeah, so I'm just gonna keep it. Ah, uh, uh, ant, how did an ant get in my back? Yuck, nature. But it's so nice outside. How can we not be outside? <laughs> it's just nicer sitting up in a chair, but it's okay. This got us the right height to talk to each other. So. Um, I just hope I don't get stuck. I got stuck earlier this week. I was sitting in front of the uh, router and the modem and having some technical difficulty with my work computer. So I was art fighting with it at home here in the living room. And I spent probably half an hour sitting there just, Arr! and the position I was in was not a great one. And my knees locked up, my groin was all in pain. And I was like, why do I do? I ended up laying down on my back for like five minutes and then it was very it was sad I it was very sad it was definitely a low point in my life and I just I managed to get myself onto my knees and then I got up but oh it was not a pretty sight so can't sit in one position for that long but anyways so the Houdini socks <laughs> Um, yeah, we're going to do a knit along through July 31st, so you have plenty of time if you want to knit a pair as well, experiment with this different construction. I'm going to do a ribbed leg, and I'm not going to do the, the um, stitch pattern that's called for in the pattern, but I'm still going to call it a Houdini sock. So if you would like to join in, uh, use the tag, hashtag Houdini socks. So there you go. Those are on the needles, and they'll see more work now. But... Um, in addition to finishing my Mystic socks, I also finished this guy. Ah, my bunny. Actually, it's not my bunny. It's T's bunny, but uh, I think two's bunny. But here he is. So this is the Opal Sock Yarn Bunny and Hat Set Pattern by Susan B. Anderson. Here's the bunny. Here's his ears. If I hang him by his ears, that's kind of mean. Um, super fun, quick little knit. I love the afterthought construction. And did I do anything different? No, I pretty much followed the pattern as recommended. And um, I didn't put in any polyfill into his bum, or not bum, polyfill, the beans to keep him flat just because he is going to be for a baby. And um, oh, now I'm worried about these eyes. I didn't think about it. They're safety eyes. Are they okay? I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to think on that. If anything, he'll just sit on the dresser, if, or at worst case, I should say. He'll sit on the dresser and just smile at the little guy. But um, this is Into the World Bakuva yarn, which is the uh, BFL and nylon blend. And as you remember from last time, I'm still not a fan of the BFL. But um, I love this color, which is Vegetable Mel Melody. Medley, medley, vegetable medley. <laughs> it's correct in the show notes. And I used 115 yards to complete him. And so now I have this much left and I have my needles and I'm ready to cast on for the hat. So um, the hat has, no, I don't have it printed, has bunny ears on it. And it's a, uh, you could do a zero to six month or a six to 12 month size. So I'm gonna do the bigger size just because we tend to have larger hats. <laughs> I want to be able to wear it for a while. So, yay, bunny! And the um, the hat is actually knit on larger needles. The bunny was knit on size ones, 2.25 millimeter, and the hat is knit. I'm gonna go with a big two instead. Of, it says two. I'm gonna go with a big two because that's what I could find, which is the 2.53 millimeter needles. So should go 
bit faster than the bunny, but again, I still have twice as much yardage to knit on that guy. So, and that is some Rhinebeck yarn that I bought, so I'm excited to be using that. I have a hibernating project that has actually come back out. So I was looking at my yardage for uh, Stash Dash and thinking, oh, I gotta get some big, bigger projects finished and off the needles to get some of that big yardage. And so, just grab, not an ant. So I pulled out the tubularity. This is by Martina Bem. I'm using mainly Miss Babs Yowza. And nope, I say that every time, Miss Babs Yummy. The two ply uh, superwash sock. And this is how big it is so far. I did, I am, I did, I am, I did. <laughs> I'm using US 3's 3.25 millimeter needles. And when it's completed, it'll be over 900 yards. So I have a section and a half to go. I've been doing a lot on this deep sea jellyfish the past two days. So that's obviously the most recent what's on my needles. And I did um, put in a few additional buttonholes. I don't think I'm supposed to have started them yet, but I wanted to make sure I had enough. And um, based on some of the advice I've heard, it would be better to have more holes and more options than, than uh, less. So, uh, what else can I tell you about this? Hmm. I'm currently 43 inches long, right here, and the pattern calls for, ooh, isn't that fun? Calls for 46, so I'm definitely going, if I keep the length, I mean, I have another three inches of the deep sea jellyfish color, which is so sad because that's the color that I most wanted to knit with and why I put it at the end as sort of an incentive to help me move along. But, um, and then I have this dark, deep purple that I really like. And when you think about, I just had it around me, these are going to be buttoned and touching. So I really don't want the two variegateds next to each other. I really want the separation and either I'll be buttoning it here or I'll be using purple I think I need I really need to knit into the purple but then the longer it is the more that it's gonna button over itself and I'm gonna lose the green so I don't, know. I don't know I'm torn but right now I just put in my second buttonhole I'm gonna give it another two inches in the deep sea jellyfish and then reevaluate put it back on so I did try it, it on this morning and um, to stretch 43 inches of basically a tube over your head over my head it was a very snug fit and maybe maybe it's a little bit of a swelling I'll, I'll attribute it to that sure but I'm also thinking I have to write myself a great big huge reminder bold letters um, when I block this to definitely give it an aggressive width block and that'll cut down on some of this length too so because I do want to be able to have that option and wear it that way and not just have to always wear it as a double thick scarf but Okay, it's 75 degrees here today, so maybe it's not a good representation, but man, this thing is going to be warm. Huh, I had it on for maybe, as this way, <clears throat> I had it on for maybe 10 minutes this morning as I was playing with it in the bathroom there, and it was just like, whoa, this is going to be like super warm and drapey, but I'm not sure what color I'll put in front, but I'm excited. So hopefully, hopefully this will be done next time we talk. And that would be a lovely addition to my stash dash yardage. So, anyways, that's that. Um, what else do I have to tell you? Camp Loopy! Camp Loopy has begun! Um, it started on June 1st. It runs, well, the first project. June 1st to June 30th. And I was so focused on the mist, my, mystic, my stick mystic socks that and the bunny that I was like I can't I can't have one more thing on my needles right now I just can't do it can't blow big. and so I waited actually until yesterday to cast on which is kind of funny because I was like, so excited I had the project page created I had taken pre-project pictures and I was all about it and then oh not today oh not today um I think part of I don't know I just want to get some things done, you know, and I'm feeling that urge to like have things taken care of. So, uh, speaking of which, our bathroom shower, the um, the faucet has been dripping, drip, 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 and we got our utility bill this month, and it was a hundred dollars over six months more than it typically is, which is 
Okay, not a big deal, $200 over the course of the year, but it made me so mad because I've been asking my husband to fix it. And to have that, like, that amount of water, whatever that, I mean, it's normally $130 and it was $230. So it's like, oh my God, how much water did we lose? Oh my, what are we doing to the planet? And so I really got after him to fix it last weekend. Well, he watched his YouTube videos. Um, <laughs> he's a finance guy, okay? He watched his, a couple of YouTube videos, thought he had it all figured out what to do, tore a bunch of stuff apart, was in there, ended up spending like six hours trying to fix it. And then um, spending all this time trying to fix it and then just no we ended up with a leaking pipe instead of just a leaking faucet and so we spent a couple days with he jerry-rigged it so that the um, shower could be used but we had to use plier like it was so ghetto so ghetto and we could he kept having to shut off the water in the house and so I was drinking bottled water because we didn't dare I didn't dare drink the water in the house because it was coming out kind of reddish from the pipes oh my god so that was Sunday and it was Tuesday night before we could get a plumber here to replace a whole bunch of it and it's fixed and it's beautiful now, but lesson learned for me that nagging at the husband to fix things, maybe not the greatest idea. <laughs> maybe want to just call in the handyman, not the handyman, but the plumber first. But anyways, I digress. <laughs> I don't know what made me think of that either. But here is my Camp Loopy project. So that is the Soledad by Annika Barante. Um, I do have to say, so this was published in spring 2012 in Petite Pearls. And I took one of Roland's current sweatshirts, so I'm knitting this for him. Um, one of his sweatshirts that's a little big for him that I know I'll want him that will fit six months from now because that's Rhineback, Thanksgiving, Christmas, like that's when this sweater will be worn. And um, so I took that and I measured it. And it's a 4T and it measured a 27 inch chest. And then I came over here, right? I measured the chest, I measured the length of the arms and the length of the body. So I wanna make sure that the, I like the fit of that sweatshirt or I will like it better as he grows a little taller. And so I wanted to mirror that. And according to the pattern, that is a size six. Now the sweatshirt is labeled as a 4T. So, um, and, and I found that so often with the baby knitting I've done that the, what the pattern says, like you pair that with the size discrepancy of the pattern versus commercially produced garments and any sort of gauge problem. No wonder so many sweaters come out short and fat. Like they just don't work kids sweaters. So, um, I don't know. I just, I guess a cautionary tale to make sure that if you're knitting for a kid, you're really checking out what the um, size charts are. And I would highly recommend just going to like Carter's or Children's Place, their website. They have size charts that you can click on. And so you can say, okay, I'm knitting for a two year old. I know a two year old's gonna wear like a three T, four T, twice the age. Okay, four T chest is, and just, I don't know, word of caution. <laughs> so, um, and I knew that going into it, I had a sense that he, I mean, that it was gonna be knitting one of the bigger sizes. So I ordered enough yeah, yarn. I am knitting it in the Playa colorway of Malabrigo Rios, which I have to say, this skein doesn't do it justice. Um, it is absolutely gorgeous. The, I love the way it feels. It's so squishy. Um, knit on fours and fives, which is a lot lower needle size than I would typically knit a worsted weight yarn. And I am getting almost gauge. I'm, I'm a stitch off from getting gauge, so I decided to let that go. Stitch over four inches, so fine. Um, but yeah, you could just see that it is so pretty. It is this beautiful navy and tan and gray mix. Oh, I just oh, I super love it, super love it. So I started with a sleeve thinking I could use that as a gauge swatch, and if I was really off, I could change it. Oh my goodness, people, I love you, but I'm busy at the moment. <laughs> So, um, really nice, really happy with this. And yeah, I'm not that far into it, but I shouldn't have any problem finishing it by the end of the month. At least I hope not. Um, yeah, so the tubularity and this are gonna be my main focus, I'm thinking, for the next bit of time. So, that's my Camp Loopy project. Yeah.
yeah, looking at my notes, there's nothing else I have to tell you about it. <laughs> so those, all those projects, I did a like rough math. Um, they total up to about 6,000 yards. 6,000, yeah. No, 2,000 yards. <laughs> Added to the 900, so I need another 2,000, 2,500 yards. So I started thinking about what else can I pull out um, in terms of what I have hibernating. So I have the socks from my mom. Those are or the starter socks. Those are about 300 yards. Sorry. The Denver cowl is going to be about another 500 yards if I finish that. The sock hat hat that you haven't seen in ages. Um, but Darren of Knitting in Circles is knitting one. And I'm kind of like, if he can do it, I can do it. So maybe that'll come back out. That'll, that'll be another 350 yards. And then the Vivid, I have to put that edging on, and that would be uh, bring me up to 650 yards. Can you believe the tubularity is more yardage than the Vivid? Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, small news. So that together adds up to 1,800 yards, so I'm still like 700 yards short. So then I was thinking, okay, what else am I going to cast on new between now and August 7th? I'm definitely going to knit a couple pairs of socks. Like, that's a given. So that would be like 600 yards. Um, I was looking at my sweaters that are languishing UFOs. There are, I think, five or six sweaters I know, in my deep, deep hibernating. And there's one that's 40% complete. So I could finish that. Like, I have half of a sleeve and I'm down to, like, here on the body. So but that's a, that would be a big commitment there. So on the fence. And then there's going to be... Um, the Camp Loopy, the second Camp Loopy project, and I'm hoping I can somehow work the foolproof cowl into that, because Amy Beth, Bat Squirrel Speaks, knit several of those, and I have just been dying to knit that, and I need to do it, but I wouldn't let myself cast it on until the tubularity was off my needle, just as a, like, incentive to finish the tubularity. So, those are all the things I'm thinking about. You know how I said I would never knit another pieced blanket again? Well, when I finished these socks, I couldn't help but think that <clears throat> while I didn't want to wear this color on my feet, I thought it would make a great barn raising uh, square. And so I set it aside. And now the idea has been bouncing around in my head for a while. I really think I want to knit one of those barn raising blankets. It only takes 42 stitch squares. And if I set out and said, okay, this is going to be done in three years, like just every pair of socks I finish, if I knit 12 pairs a year, yeah. I'll be almost there in three years. So it seems reasonable to me. I, granted, I have a ton of leftover um, stashed yarn, like leftover socks, bits and bobs, but I think it would be fun to say from this point forward, from the time that TT was born, I knit this blanket out of the leftovers. So just a thought, but I definitely can't do it during stash dash because I'm not gonna finish 42 squares before uh, August, <laughs> the middle of August. So that's that. I have one more thing to share with you, and that is, spoiler alert, um, <clears throat> I did get my club colorway from Into the World, and this is tickled pink. It is the, my favorite face! <laughs> so this is the May 2014 uh, yarn club color. It's a fingering weight, 435 yards of superwash merino cashmere nylon. So, and it's beautiful! It wants to be a shawl! and be around my neck. I've been thinking about knitting a Multnomah, so maybe I will be knitting it with this sooner. I don't know. Ah, so pretty, so squishy. So I think that's all I have for you for today. Um, it kind of goes with the pink I'm wearing. I will see you in about 10 days or so or longer or less or who knows, because <laughs> that's what we're up to. And. Um, I'm going to be knitting away and posting on Instagram um, over on the RAV discussion boards. Good place to find me. And I look forward to chatting with you. So enjoy what's going on in your knitting world. I'll talk to you later.